Hey guys, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video and for today I want to make a complete beginner's guide on the game consisting of the most important things you should know for the early parts of your adventure. In other words, I'm going to help you get acquainted with the key mechanics, gameplay elements, and features that you want to be aware of up until around Adventure Rank 15 when the game starts getting a little more interesting. I know a lot of other content creators have already made videos on this topic, so there might be some overlap, but regardless I wanted to make my own version so I hope that's alright. If you're still looking for help on the game, I've opened a Genshin Impact channel category in my Discord and I'm hoping to build a nice community for the people to gather, play, and share information with each other so be sure to check it out, links are down below. Last thing to let you know is that this guide will be covering the general aspects of each part of the game. More specific and detailed versions will be released in separate videos, but it should be enough to at least help you get started. Also, if the video does get a lot of support, I'll be sure to make a follow-up video on more advanced stuff to know. But with that out of the way, let's get started. Genshin Impact is a gacha game. If this is your first time playing one, gacha games are named after the famous gacha pawn machine, which is a vending machine that dispenses capsules with toys or other prizes inside. For most of you, gacha games can easily be related to loot boxes, in that the way you obtain units is random and so therefore your chances of getting the item, character, or whatever you want is based entirely off of luck. Which may seem fun for most players and frustrating for others, that's just part of the game. So regarding that, let's get you acquainted with the currency system of this game. Genshin Impact's in-game coin is called Mora. It's what's used to purchase various items, ingredients, and equipment throughout the game. You'll also need them to perform many tasks regarding your units, but thankfully they are extremely common so you don't have to pinch your pennies. For the premium currency, we have Primo Gems, obtainable through quests, collecting, ranking up commissions, and through in-game purchases. Primo Gems can be used to obtain Fates, which is the game's main summoning currency. It costs 160 Primo Gems to obtain either an intertwined Fate or an acquaint Fate. The former is used for standard summons, and the latter is used for event summons. As for the players who are, you know, willing to bust out the old Benjamins, you can convert Genesis Crystals to Primo Gems as well at a 1 to 1 ratio. Based on the largest package, aside from receiving double on your first purchase, 100 US dollars will grant you 50 pulls, give or take, which puts Genshin Impact right sort of in the middle in terms of how expensive it is to go pay to win. Some other games might do 30, others might do 100, it just usually depends. But the progression in this game is very free to play friendly, so don't worry about that too much. Using the Fates, you can perform wishes to summon units and weapons, with units coming at 4 to 5 stars and weapons having 3 to 5 stars. The higher the star rating, the stronger the unit or weapon. Usually. Obtaining units will give you access to Stardust, another form of currency. Don't worry, this is the last one for this video, I promise. It is a lot to write down, but uh, for your convenience, someone was kind enough to make an infographic about all the various currencies in the game. The link is down below in the video description. 4 star units will grant you Stardust, which can then be re-exchanged for more Fates. 5 intertwined and 5 acquaints per month. So think of Stardust as sort of reward points in a sense. You can use Stardust to buy materials, weapons, and Mora as well. As of right now, the general consensus is to spend any Stardust you get on the 10 Fates, so you can keep doing more pulls. The rest can be used at your discretion, but for the most part, save as much as you can for when you actually need to buy something. Star Glitters are obtained from 5 star units which have the same basic principle as Stardust, only you can get an indefinite amount of fates and better items. Naturally, they're a lot harder to come by since you need 5 star units instead of 4. Best not to use them on fates since some of the weapons are actually quite good. If it helps, I personally am choosing to save mine for the time being until something more important comes up. Alright, now that I've gotten you set up on how the game's gacha system works, let's talk about the actual game. The most important thing you should know right away is Genshin Impact's Adventure Rank, or AR for short, which is your account's overall progression. The more you raise your rank, the more access to content you are given in the form of world levels, dungeons, even modes. Since this is the beginner's guide, I'll just cover the bare essentials. Each time you raise your rank, you're given a bunch of rewards from the Adventurer's Guild, which usually consists of Mora, Primo Gems, Enhancing Materials, Experience Books, and the occasional something else, like a piece of equipment. The rewards get better and better as you climb through the rank, so it's in your best interest to go as high as you possibly can. AR experience has many different sources. Completing quests, discovering new landmarks, daily commissions, adventure handbook achievements, treasure chests, so on and so forth. Essentially, just play the game. I'll make a detailed guide on the best way to grind out AR experience in the coming future, but what you should know for the time being is to just explore as much as possible. Simply following the storyline is not enough to raise your rank. In fact, some parts of the storyline require a certain adventure rank to even access, so they're essentially forcing you to complete side quests and explore the land yourself. My recommendation is to start by unlocking as many waypoints and landmarks as possible while also trying to complete much of the adventurer handbook as you can. In fact, working on these achievements naturally help you get more AR experience. It does get progressively more and more difficult to level up your rank, but the higher your rank goes, the more they make up for it by giving you more ways to get experience. In short, explore, explore, explore. The more you discover the world, the higher your adventure rank. While you're exploring, you're most likely to come across a bunch of nifty little easter eggs that are necessary for your progression. Secret treasure chests are scattered all throughout the world with the contents in each one ranging in value based on what kind of chest. 
common, exquisite, precious, and luxurious. Usually you're gonna get AR experience, primo gems, mora, sigils, and some assortment of items. I haven't been able to find all of them, but in your immediate area, these are the spots that you want to check out which I have marked on my map with clover-shaped waypoints for reference, several of which are located within Mondstadt, the first major city you visit. Each of these locations have very valuable rewards including some equipment that's much needed for your party. There's also another source of valuable loot called Seelies, cute little cyan-colored spirits that look very much like a will-o'-wisp, and they float around all over the world. You cannot see them on your map, so you'll have to keep a close eye out whenever you're wandering around. They do get more conspicuous at night naturally because they're bright spirits in contrast to the dark scenery. Follow these spirits by getting close to them until they reach a tiny statue and sit on them. By the way, if you come across one of these statues, search around. A Seelie will definitely be nearby for you to check out. They usually spawn exquisite chests, although from what I've heard they can drop precious chests, though the information might be inconclusive. Aside from chests, you'll also want to collect something called Oculi. These are valuable orbs that can be used to empower statues present all around the world called Statues of the Seven. Maxing them out is a top priority as they grant you access to more areas on your map, serve as teleport waypoints alongside the standard ones, they act as a healing source so you can go to any statue to restore your party, they also provide sigils, primo gems, and AR experience upon leveling up, but most importantly you can get bonus stamina which lets you climb, swim, glide, sprint, and fight for much longer. As of right now, since it's only been about a week since the release, there are only two continents available, the Geo and Anima regions. Collecting Animoculus and Geoculus is probably the most tedious part of the entire game, but don't put too much pressure on yourselves to get them done as soon as possible. They're a top priority, yes, but this is a beginner's guide. I'm only bringing them up for the sake of awareness. As for collecting them, go at your own pace, but definitely make sure you're on top of it. For your information, there are 65 Animoculus and 131 Geoculus, so chances are the next continent that opens up may require 200, I'm not sure. There are 7 elements in this game, so hunting and gathering Oculi will not be going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, better get used to it. <laughs> By the way, the community has been absolutely spectacular with their contributions. In fact, an interactive world map was created detailing almost every single valuable thing in the entire game, so if you're one of those hardcore completionists like I am, the link will be in the video description. In fact, whether you're a serious player or a casual one, this map is invaluable for anybody. Okay, so the last topic I want to talk about for this video is that of your units and equipment. Each unit comes with a base level that caps out at 20 prior to ascensions. At the current moment, you don't need to worry about ascensions since you need to be rank 15, but essentially, you spend valuable materials to boost the maximum level of a character while also granting them a new talent, which is a special property only they have. Leveling up your units can be done through questing, but mostly through using character experience materials or experience books as many people know them for. Players have different values on how they should use these experience books, but for me, I use the Wanderer's Advice and Adventure's Experience and I choose to save my hero's wit for the future. Save the hero's wits for your higher levels because I imagine the experience table does get pretty steep the higher you go. The next aspect is their constellation. Any duplicate units you pull will automatically be renewed into a Stella Fortuna, which can then be used to complete the original one's constellation. For free to play players, constellations will be very time consuming to unlock because you'll need 6 extra dupes, but you'll be happy to know that your progression through the game will not be gated by this mechanic so don't worry, the game is not pay to win. This is just for those players who really want to min max and draw lines on the sand to assert their non-existent dominance over absolutely no one. I'm just kidding, I'm a pay to win player myself so I guess I'm as guilty of that as anyone else. Each unit can be equipped with a single weapon and 4 artifacts. The weapon type differs from individual to individual. Some can use swords, others can use bows, tomes, catalysts, spears, greatswords, what have you. For most players, they would recommend for you to have one support unit, one melee, or maybe two melees, and then one ranged character. The weapons themselves come with a base attack and a special attribute, usually related to the weapon itself. For example, one sword may come with bonus critical damage, another might be defense, another might be HP. Additionally, each one comes with a weapon ability, which is a unique property attached to that weapon. Enhancing a weapon requires other equipment to be consumed to increase the weapon's level, boosting its two base stats by quite a significant margin, so you should focus on maxing them out as soon as possible. Refining is the same as enhancements, except you can only refine with weapons of the same name. If you're having a hard time deciding on which one to do, always prioritize refining a weapon first and then enhancing it. Of course, if you lack the duplicate weapons needed to refine a weapon, feel free to use whatever items you have to enhance it. Now as for what stats to look for, until you reach higher levels and progress farther throughout the game, go after damage and attack. So for example, attack bonus, physical damage bonus, critical damage bonus, etc. Elemental mastery can be a good choice if the party composition you have synergizes well with it, but once again, those are more advanced things so for the early stages of the game, when in doubt, anything that says damage or attack is good. Bonus points if the weapon ability synergizes with the unit's specific element. 
Party composition is the last thing to talk about, but since that's a huge amount of detail, I'll just give you a general gist of it and make a better video later. You're allowed 4 members per party, and you can also make multiple party presets. Certain units have great synergy with each other while others don't, so you'll have to mix and match until you eventually find the one that fits best. Head on over to the Elemental Resonance tab and you'll notice additional bonuses for going specific element combinations. For example, in this clip I have a double Electro and Animo party so I get these bonuses. Usually they come in pairs, I don't know if in the future there might be rewards for going 3 or 4 all together, but you get something nice if you also go 4 unique elements, so decide which one is more your fancy. As for other players, many enjoy going double Pyro and double Animo since Pyro gives huge DPS and Animo is useful just for, you know, overall travel. I personally prefer Electro, but to each their own. Okay, that's a lot of content to absorb, but believe me this game has a ton of depth, so I'll more than likely be making an advanced guide and separate guides for each of the aspects in the coming days. Hopefully this video was helpful to those who needed it and entertaining to those who wanted it. I plan to leave a lot of supplemental information in the video description by the way if you want to do some more research on your own. Thanks to player contribution as well as the closed beta, we have a lot of information available so make use of the resources that you have. Kenshin Impact so far has been a ton of fun and I plan to do my best to make quality content for the game so if you're looking forward to more commentary and guide videos it would be awesome if you could leave a like to show your support, check out my future Kenshin Impact videos by subscribing, leave a comment if you have any specific questions or if you have tips of your own that you'd like to share. Once again check out my discord server to be part of the new community, I'll try to be as active as I can. Aside from that, check out my live streams on Twitch or YouTube, I stream on both. I'll usually let you know a few hours before when I start streaming, but that's gonna be it for now. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon for the next video. Take care.